I'm Matthew Martins, I'm grade 12. My name is Teresa Walker and I'm an SEA at the school. My name is Cameron Campbell, I'm a 12 year brain cancer survivor. Uh, my name is Doug McGinn, I teach uh, physical education in the school and I've been here for 25 years. My name is Emma Coyle and I'm a graduate from Walnut Grove Secondary School back in 2013. Uh, my name is Alistair Coyle and I'm a grade 12 at Walnut Grove Secondary School. I'm Tracy Johnson. I'm an English and resource teacher. My name is Olivia Scotcher and I'm in grade 11. Uh, I'm Alex Edwards and I'm grade 12. My name is Rosemary Davis. I'm a youth worker here at Walnut Grove Secondary School. So my mom had cancer just last year and as well as my uncle. My mom was diagnosed with uh, stage 4 colon cancer. I, we lost her to cancer and then my dad was diagnosed and 11 months later we lost my dad to cancer also. In 2017 in February my sister Emma was diagnosed with uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer which is a cancer in the lymph nodes of her body. I was about five years old when I had the treatment. I got diagnosed just over three years ago with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Cancer has impacted me through my dad and my grandpa, but mostly my dad. I was diagnosed last year, May of 2017, with stage 3B Hodgkin's lymphoma. My younger sister had, uh, had a seizure and collapsed. Uh, when I was 14, my dad passed away and from lung cancer stage 3. They had told her that, uh, with my parents here, that, uh, that the results were in and she had a terminal disease. It limited us to like going on family trips and like just seeing my mom in so much pain and like not really being able to do anything besides moral support. It just kind of like took a toll at school. At the time I had an eight month old baby and a two and a half year old girl. Um, and so cancer very much interrupted my mommyhood portion of my life. It gave me a great appreciation for every single moment, every single day, every single opportunity um, that life has given me. So it's definitely heightened the importance of just the everyday things for myself, but mostly for my time with my kids and my time teaching really with my students is very valuable to me. I had radiation and chemotherapy. It paralyzed my left side of my body and it decreased the, my height. Dad, he was diagnosed when I was nine and he passed away when I was 11 from a brain tumor. I learned like a lot of things about like how tough my sister was and like it's a very like uh, aggressive and like very uh, long treatment and my sister was showed a lot of bravery to like go through everything and it was like hard seeing how like like her change like from her losing her hair and like her losing so much weight and just becoming very skinny. So my sister had three boys, uh, 19 at the time and two 17 year old twin boys. Words can't describe when someone tells you uh, that there's no hope. The strongest person in the family was my sister. She, she was strong for her boys. She was strong for everybody. Uh, she went through the uh, radiation treatment. She couldn't do chemo because uh, She'd been on blood thinners. They gave her nine months to live. And when you think about it, when somebody gives you a deadline like, like that, if you, you have nine months left to, to do what you need to do in your life. But she did it for her kids and she did it for her family. And, and I always thought that she did it for me too. When I was first told that I had cancer, the hardest thing for me at the time was finding a way to tell my family. How do you tell your parents and your husband and your children that you have cancer? When I was diagnosed, there were two other staff members here at school. Um, uh, Jean Livingston was the librarian here, and Barry Kirsch was a teacher. And um, the three of us were all diagnosed with cancer within six months of each other. Sadly, um, Jean and, and Barry did not uh, survive. I often think about them. Then we had um, someone come in to cover for me. Her name was Freya Paul, and she covered for the year that I was off sick. And um, several years later, she ended up getting cancer, and she did not survive either. I'm very grateful 
that I have a cancer that's treatable. It may not be curable, but it is treatable. And even though it comes back every few years and I have to go through chemo and radiation and all that fun stuff, um, I, I know I'll get through it. He was uh, my best friend and I was really close to him and it was very hard to let him go. Um, I lost all of my hair and I had to quit my job and I lost like pretty much a year of my life. I was told not too long ago that I was in remission. So I'm happy, but I still have to go for tests, so I have a lot of like anxiety too, because you never know like the what ifs. I think it's really important because you don't necessarily know who's going through what in high school, and especially when like your best friend could, one of their parents could be going through what my mom went through. Just by like helping out a tiny bit can like really make a big difference in their lives. For more research, for hopefully a cure, for personalized treatment, we have to try and beat cancer. Without the support of everybody, people like me, fellow moms, um, and I unfortunately wish my story was the story of everybody um, that I got a second chance at life. There are treatments for Hodgkin's lymphoma that are very effective. There aren't treatments that are effective for every kind of cancer out there. And my hope would be that my story and the second chance I got would be everybody's story that uh, is affected by cancer. We've got to be active. We've got to take an active role in this. We've got to make it important. When it happens to you, there is nothing more important than finding a cure for this horrible, horrible disease. It's important to continue fundraising for research because it doesn't just affect the person diagnosed, it affects everyone around them, everyone they know, and it's not just people who are most likely at risk. It's not just people with addictions or people who smoke. Um, my dad was very healthy, he never smoked, he never drank, he was always exercising. It just, it comes out of nowhere and it's something that needs to be talked about more. I think we should fundraise so nobody else has to go through what I had to go through or my family had to go through and I don't want anybody else to have to suffer from cancer. I think it's important because it shows that like Walnut Grove cares and Walnut Grove like understands that everyone's being affected by it. I actually didn't really get involved with the Terry Fox Run. Um, I found it back in the day an opportunity to basically skip and uh, hang out with my friends so I never really partook. Uh, I feel super guilty and um, if I could go back in time I would definitely participate and maybe get even more involved. You know, you never forget those people. And that's what drives us or me to find to find a way to, to deal with it. And uh, I think that's, that's what I need to say.